Swan is a sixth grader who figured out that the key to life is participation. She participates in the robotics club where her code got them to state. She participates in band by playing the French horn, in the community service club at her school, and finally in magic. She was motivated by her sister's illness to learn how to help people through science and technology. And with that in mind, we decided to explore MIT App Inventor. Now she's going to tell you about her journey. My mentor, Anok, is a radiologist and computer programmer. She teaches iPhone apps to kids. And she is also a mom, and she also works for an AI company. What she seems like she's a pretty busy person to take time out of her day to t help me um, learn how to program using MIT App Inventor. We made several apps using the f following components, such as a mini database, canvases, sprites, text-to-speech, and tra the translate components, just to name a few. As you can see here, there are lots of problems that we had to go through. We have listed some of the major problems here. First of all, the emulator did not work on my Chromebook. We got around this problem by my mentor, Anok, sending me an Android device to test our apps on. Second of all, once we were coding one of our mo more major apps, we found out that texting was no longer supported. Another major problem was it, it was not documented anywhere that texting was no longer supported or that any of our problems on here were documented, honestly. We got around this issue by using the sharing component found on MIT App Inventor. Many of our problems, as I said before, were not documented, leaving us to ourselves to figure out how to get around these problems. Then we can, then could not download our APKs or apps onto our devices. So first we had to enable developers mode by clicking the build number seven times. Don't you think that's rather odd? Then we also enable download from unknown sources. Then we also debug the USB connection, but we still couldn't figure out why we couldn't, why our APKs wouldn't download. Then finally, one day, after many trial and error, we found that there's a downloads tab on Android devices where you can download APKs onto the phone. Each, pro each problem took at least one to two session sessions to resolve, which was a pretty long time. This is the picture. This is a picture of the tutorials I used to get familiar with how to use MIT App Inventor. This is a picture of the apps I've made so far. On here you can see the app's name, the date created, the date modified, and if it's been published or not. Talk to Me was, was my very first app that I made using MIT App Inventor. The app will read out loud the text into text box that the user types in when the talk to me button is pressed. As you can see here, the code is very simple and basic, but is functional and interactive to the user. Th this next app is called Ball Bounce. What this app does is that when you move the ball, it'll continue to go in the direction that it was led in until it reaches the edge of the screen where it bounces off, hence why it's called ball bounce. Once again, this code's pretty simple, which once again helped me understand how MIT App Inventor worked, getting me familiar with the basics. This was the first major app that I have made. This app was inspired by my little sister, Vinny, who has gotten cancer at the age of three. In this app, there are three screens. In this app, there's three screens. There's a screen one, which is also called the home screen, where you can send messages to get advice, support, or if it's an emergency. These all have preset messages, or you can also send custom messages if you prefer. Also, this app was where we discovered MIT App Inventor no longer supported texting. Here, you can see 
from how we progress from very simple apps, from very simple playful apps into much more complex apps that could support and help solve problems in the real world. In this app, we also use new components such as a mini database or the sharing component, which is the component we use to get around the texting problem. And this next screen is an in this app is a game, which is sort of like whack-a-mole, but instead of whacking the mole, the user has to catch a cab, which is running through the forest. In coding this game, we also use new components such as variables and functions. We use these because they'll make the code much simpler to understand. Instead of using the things that code over and over in different places, you could just make it into a function where you can just use one block. For example, in the cat, when the cat catch in a initializes, instead of using the code that we put in the functions above, that only use two blocks, which is much simpler, don't you think? And the next screen is a doodle app, where you basically, on the picture you're given, you can doodle on anything you want. You can also take a picture if needed. Also, When you press the take a picture button, it'll open up the camera for you to take a picture. Or when you also use the accelerometer to shake the device, it'll clear it. Or you can also use the white button. Also, there's sounds, which was shown in the back under non-visible components, which is the accelerometer camera and sound. Next app I made, next major app I made was the Greek gods quiz app, where it's basically a quiz about Greek gods. As an example, you can always modify the code. In here, we use new components such as lists and indexes. So, like we have the question list, picture list, answer list, and the final answer list, or the correct answer list, whichever you prefer. This next app was a translate app, which we remixed the code from another translate app that we found on MIT, App Inventor. We decided to translate into German and Telugu because my mentor on Notes, she can speak German and understand it, while I can speak Telugu and understand it. We thought it would be fun to put a part of both of our lives into something that we both can enjoy. As you can see the, here, the code got a bit simpler. This is because MIT App Inventor has a built-in translator, which made it much simpler instead of finding a way around it to make our own translator. This next app is called The Power Music, where basically you have to, we adapted an alien shooter game to make it into a non-violent version for kids to enjoy, so it's not as violent, where basically we, the f music from the French horn will go hit the ogre and it will transform into something more harm harmless. We decided on a French horn because I play the French horn in band and we thought it would be fun. In this app, we use lots of timers to control things. Timers to uh, control particular sounds at different movements and, the, and notifiers at the end. App Inventor made customizing your apps very easy, such as with the drag and drop components or the properties. The properties for each component is different. This is just an example of the screen components or properties. These are the apps I've published so far. You can find these apps by typing in the username you see on the top left-hand corner. Coding through App Inventor helped me to be more patient and persistent through life and uh, helped me learn that. And I'm pretty sure my little sister, Vinny, learned something too, as she would sometimes come in and drop in on our mentoring sessions. Thank you for listening to my presentation.